portion of this video is sponsored by FT Edit. I make videos on technology, but my heart, I am a fan of new tech. That's why I do this. I love new things. And like you, I follow the rumors. And every year, we get a nugget, something that Apple is going to blow us away with the new generation of iPhone. And get you excited and pumped. I've been so excited that I lost my voice yelling about what is going to be happening. And then like every year, we end up disappointed when we get tiny little spec bumps from what we thought we were going to get. Now Apple's under no obligation to give us what the rumors say, uh, but it looks like this year is going to be a meh-ish year for the iPhone 15, save for a few key updates that are reserved for the 15 Pro. So while Apple didn't actually cancel the iPhone 15, I think they canceled what could have been the iPhone 15. Let's talk about it. We've kind of entered the phase of smartphones where the year over year improvements are not nearly as big as they used to be. So when we get rumors that a major redesign is coming, this is when I think things get really exciting because it's going to be something new that we haven't seen before. And well, that's exactly what we we're expecting from the iPhone 15 series. We've seen leaks, renders, rumors about this refresh could look like. In fact, actually, if you remember a few years ago when John Prosser released this iPhone 4 style redesign, speculated this might in fact be the iPhone 15 series. But as time goes on, it looks like that hope of getting a fresh new coat of paint uh, is becoming less and less likely. Assuming you don't just characterize USB type C as a fresh coat of paint. Uh, you've probably heard of the, maybe the TikTok pattern that Apple would follow. You know, TikTok, like TikTok, not like TikTok. I'm sorry that I did that. We'll never be able to unsee it. But essentially what that means, Apple will release a new phone and the next year it'd be followed by an S model that was the same basic design with some new key features. But ever since the iPhone 10, that TikTok uh, model uh, hasn't been happening. Apple now seems to be on a three year lease cycle instead of two. And we got the iPhone 10, uh, that design stuck around until the iPhone 11. Then we got the redesigned iPhone 12 and this is still the same basic form factor that we have today. Sure, there are some differences to the model to model, but it's the same basic design idea at least. So now that has been three generations of iPhone with the squared off design, it's kind of easy to predict that this would be the year when Apple does a major revamp, we get something totally new. So I got a lot to talk about when it comes to Apple's plans. Before I get there, uh, I do wanna talk about a new app to the news game from a very established player. Uh, this is FT Edit from the Financial Times. So if you guys read the news or wanna read the news, uh, first of all, it can be very time consuming. You find yourself stuck in like an endless scroll. You're getting articles that maybe you don't wanna read. Uh, FT Edit has made it really easy, simplified it completely. They're gonna give you eight new articles each weekday, no more, no less, eight new curated articles. And by the end of those eight articles, you pretty much know everything that is going on in the world. Today I was reading an article on Elon Musk, for example, sort of pleading with the tech executives to pump the brakes on some of the AI development going on. There's another article I was reading on Binance and their ties with some of the Chinese government going on. So articles from a variety of topics, they make it really seamless, really easy, and a very elegant UI. It's an article that you wanna read, you can save it and come back to it later. And it's from Financial Times, a name that's been around for years uh, when it comes to news. So if you're sick of kind of the endless scroll, you don't know where to go to find news, uh, this is a really awesome way to do it. If you want to check it out, I've got a link down below that will give you a free 30 days to sort of see if it's worth it for you. Uh, it is a subscription service. But either way, all the information to check out FT Edits is, is right down here. So I'm sorry to throw some cold water on the hopes, but apparently the iPhone 15 uh, will be slightly different, but mostly the same. We'll sport a flat front display like we have now, but the sides will curve around. We should also have smaller bezels on the screen as well. Sort of think of this design like an iPhone 5C with more premium materials and not, you know, unapologetically plastic. It's all pretty hard to visualize just from the rumor, so it's definitely possible uh, this design may in fact be a completely different look but at least for now, it does not seem that that's happening. So on the Pro model, we just sort of got cat leaks from nine to five. That shows us some of the changes we're expecting, but overall it looks very similar. Uh, basically it's got thinner bezels and a bigger camera bump. And at a glance, it looks the same, uh, but it does show some other cool features that sort of I'll get to in just a sec. 
Uh, but we've got some competing rumors about the design that I'm sort of leaning more and more and more towards the design just being essentially the same. But the major plans to iPhone 15 do not seem to be happening anymore, but that doesn't mean uh, we aren't going to get sort of anything. Uh, Apple is still planning to bring some major changes across the board that should make the iPhone 15 a pretty compelling uh, buy. And this is important because all reports indicate the iPhone 14 and 14 Plus are sales failures. Uh, they are not flying off the shelves like Apple planned. I think it's sort of easy to blame that on the utterly boring uh, updates that they were. Uh, the iPhone 14 is basically the iPhone 13. The 14 Plus is just too expensive to justify it over the much better spec iPhone 14 Pro. So if you are a fan of the 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max but didn't want to spend the money on it, 15 obviously seems to be your phone. That's pretty easy, right? Skip a phone. We're expecting Apple to bring over Dynamic Island to all iPhone 15 models, and the main 48 megapixel camera from the 14 Pro should make its way to all 15 models. Those are pretty big updates to the 14 Pro, so having them on the entry level iPhone 15 is gonna make a lot of people sort of jump on board and not go for the more expensive models. You can call us a rumor, but it mostly seems like fact at this point. USB-C is coming to the iPhone, the iPhone 15s, all of them, with the first model we expect to see it on. We don't know if it's gonna be Thunderbolt or USB Type-C, but say goodbye to Lightning and hello to only carrying one cable uh, when you have to travel. So like in typical Apple fashion, the USB-C chains only allow for fast speeds with uh, of course certified cables, which is, I don't know, kind of a bummer. Uh, but I guess at least, you know, USB-C is coming. But aside from that, we're also expecting the usual slew of updates, like hopefully a new processor and some new colors. So if you're comparing this phone to the iPhone 14 Pro, it doesn't seem like a big upgrade. But compared to the 14, this is going to be the, probably the phone to buy. But the 15 Pro, on the other hand, expected to see even more drastic changes. One in particular, I don't think it's a very good change at all. So the iPhone 14 series, remember that Apple was going to increase the price. Uh, to all of our surprise, Apple didn't do that. And it was awesome to see, but it seems like that is not going to last. Uh, rumor is Apple is going to raise the price on the 15 Pro models. I can't say I'm surprised. It's certainly a bummer though. Um, and I'm not really happy about it, but if you're in the market for a new phone, it does appear at least the price of the 15 is going to stay the same. Um, but on to some good news with the features. Uh, the iPhone 15 Pro will come in two sizes, the same size as we have now with the 14 Pro. We don't yet know what the new design will look like. We do expect the Pro materials to be titanium and state of stainless steel that we've got right now. And like as weird as it is to talk about, rumors of buttons on the iPhone 15 Pros have been all over the place. They were solid state, now they're not solid state. And sort of where we've landed is that the up and down for volume will still be buttons. The profile switcher though looks to be gone, replaced by a action button, similar to what we have on the Apple Watch Ultra. And on iOS 17 front, we're hearing reports that this is actually going to allow side loading. Uh, of apps, which should be very interesting, especially to see third-party app stores uh, on iOS. There's a lot of privacy concerns with that, obviously, when you're inside of Apple's ecosystem, you buy an app or download an app from the app store. Presumably, it's been checked and is safe. Um, I did a bit of research and try to understand how Apple's apps would work, and they're all sandboxed on their own. So they wouldn't necessarily have full access to other things on your phone. Now, permissions could be granted that could enable them to have some access. So I think you have to be aware, but it opens up the door to apps that Apple has previously, you know, never allowed before. So really interesting to see that actually makes its way to iOS 17 uh, at all. But it does seem that Apple's working hard to make this experience as seamless as possible. Uh, other big feature we're expecting to see is a periscope telephoto camera on the 15 Pro Max or Ultra, whatever they call it. This would be the first time Apple includes a feature like this and allow for obviously much higher quality and sort of more zoom on the optical side. Uh, we've seen this on countless Android phones, so it's no surprise that Apple wants to do it here too, but it's nice that it'll finally be coming. And like with the iPhone 15, the Pro Max will also be getting USB Type-C and a new processor uh, and likely a slew of new colors as well. So we're expecting big changes with the iPhone 15. It seems like we're gonna be getting the iPhone 15 we deserve instead of the iPhone 15 we want, because you know, we haven't all been that good this year. Uh, but certainly getting things like USB Type-C should be an awesome addition across the board. But again, it's just fun to speculate. Just being a fan of technology to imagine what could be coming right around the corner. What is gonna be here in September though, you're gonna have to decide if you wanna spend your hard-earned money on it or just sit this one out.